Hi all. In this video, we are going to discuss about the different whys in physiology. Basically, we are going to discuss the physiological basis questions, especially from hematology. So, I have just taken some 10 uh, statements and we are going to discuss the physiological basis behind that phenomenon. Okay. So, first we are going to discuss why there is formation, edema formation in liver disease. So, the this is pretty far, far straightforward. So, we know that liver produces albumin. And in liver diseases, there is hyperproteinemia, which in turn will cause decreased capillary oncotic pressure, which in turn will cause to edema. So what do you mean by this capillary oncotic pressure? So I hope you remember the Starling's forces. In this, we know there are four pressures of which it is this capillary oncotic pressure that is being ex exerted by the albumin, which is present inside the blood. It helps to keep the fluid inside the blood vessel. So when the capillary oncotic pressure is less, the fluid will tend to go out into the interstitium causing edema. So that is why there is edema formation in liver disease. Next is why is there anemia in renal disease? So we know that a very important hormone called erythropoietin which is responsible for formation of RBCs is produced from the kidney. So kidneys, they, it produces erythropoietin which in turn is going to stimulate erythropoiesis. That means it is going, this hormone will help in production of RBC. So what happens in renal disease? In renal disease, the RBC is going to get shrunken up and therefore the, because there is dysfunction of the kidneys, the production of erythropoietin is going to be affected. This in turn will cause a decrease in erythropoiesis which in turn will lead to anemia. So that is a cause of anemia in renal disease. The key is erythropoietin. Next question is why is the RBC count more in males than in females? Now very common answer in th that we get when we ask this question is that because females lose the blood during their regular menstrual cycle. But in fact there is a more physiological answer to that. See males contain androgens right. So this androgens stimulate erythropoietin and thereby stimulate erythropoiesis. Whereas estrogen has got an opposite effect. Even though it is not yet proven much, it is said that the estrogens inhibit erythropoietin and thereby decrease the erythropoiesis. Okay, so that is the reason why RBC count is more in males than in females. Other question is why is the venous hematocrit greater than arterial hematocrit? So which means if you are going to take blood from an artery and a vein and if you are going to compare the packed cell volume or the hematocrit of both, we will find that the venous hematocrit is at least 3% more than the arterial hematocrit. Or in other words, the volume of the venous RBC is more than the volume of the arterial RBC. So why? Well, that is because of chloride shift. So what is chloride shift? See, suppose this is a RBC. So on the venous side we know that carbon dioxide from the tissues will enter the RBC and it will combine with water in the presence of carbonic anhydrase to form carbonic acid. This in turn will dissociate to form H plus and bicarbonate. The H plus will combine with hemoglobin to form this buffer whereas the bicarbonate will be pumped out instead of chloride. So chloride will enter the RBC along with some water because it is an osmotically active particle. That is why the volume of RBC on the venous side is more and thus the hematocrit is more. So the reason is chloride shift. Okay. Next question is why is capillary hematocrit lesser than arterial hematocrit? So the, uh, the thing is if you are going to take blood from a capillary. So suppose you are going to just puncture the, a finger and going to take some blood. Calculate the PCV of that and then take blood from an artery and again calculate the PCV for that. In that case, the capillary hematocrit will be lesser than the arterial one. Why? Now here the, the answer is plasma skimming. What do you mean by plasma skimming? See, suppose this is an artery. So you know that the uh, arteries can have, uh, arteries break down into arterioles and then into capillaries. So in these capillaries, the flow of blood is a bit different. So suppose this is how the blood is going to flow inside a main vessel. When it comes to the capillaries or the micro vessels, you can see that the laminar flow of RBC is much more narrower when compared to the main vessel. That means the amount of plasma will be more in case of capillaries. So naturally their hematocrit is going to decrease. Okay, So that is why capillary hematocrit is lesser than arterial hematocrit.
So next question is why are there microcytes in iron deficiency? So in iron deficiency, we always see that the typical blood pressure, uh, blood picture is microcytic hypochromic anemia. So why are the RBC small in iron deficiency? Well, that is because see we need a critical amount of hemoglobin, critical level of hemoglobin to stop the mitosis in the precursor cells. Now, if you just look at the erythropoiesis, we can see that as the cycle proceeds the size of the cell decreases that means as the mitosis proceeds the size of the cell decreases now this mitosis will be stopped only when a critical level of hemoglobin is present otherwise what will happen the mitosis will continue so in iron deficiency anemia actually there is a decrease in iron which means there is decreased hemoglobin synthesis and thus the mitosis will continue and thus the cell becomes smaller so this is one explanation of why there are microcytes in iron deficiency next is why are macrocytes present in vitamin b12 or folic acid deficiency so we know that in vitamin b12 or folic acid deficiency we've got bigger cells and thus they are called macrocytes so why are the cells bigger see that is because vitamin b12 and folic acid are required for the dna synthesis in the rbc precursors so what will happen if vitamin B12 and folic acid is not there? The DNA synthesis will not occur properly, which means there will be a failure of nuclear maturation. And thus, there will be hampered cell division. Or in other words, mitosis will not take place properly. Thus, it will produce more large immature cells. Okay. So, that they are, thus they are also called megaloblastic anemia because megaloblasts are present. The cells are big and the nucleus is not matured enough. So, that is why we've got macrocytes in vitamin B2 and folic acid deficiency. Now, our eighth question is why is the osmotic fragility increased in hereditary spherocytosis? Now, in order to know why it is increased in hereditary spherocytosis, we should first have an idea of what the defect is in hereditary spherocytosis. So, in hereditary spherocytosis, the RBC membrane structure is affected. So, we know that the RBC membrane basically consists of a lipid bilayer and it has got many integral proteins like the glycophorins, the glycolipids. Then we have got this huge transmembrane protein which is called the band 3. And we have also got some membrane skeletal proteins, especially spectrin and anchirin. So, spectrin is attached to the glycophorins by means of actin and here we have got anchirin to bind it to the band 3. So, the, this is the structure of uh, RBC membrane. Now, so in hereditary spherocytosis, there is absence of spectrin which means the first of all the cell will be more spherical than the regular biconcave shape and it will have less flexibility. That is why they tend to become very fragile. So, the osmotic fragility is increased in hereditary spherocytosis because first of all the shape is different due to the absence of spectrum and they've got less flexibility. Okay, So, that is the cause for increased osmotic fragility in hereditary spherocytosis. A ninth question is why is ESR increased during pregnancy? Now, there are two reasons why the erythrocyte sedimentation rate is increased in pregnancy. What are they? First of all, hemodilution. See, in pregnancy also, the RBC count is increasing. But the dilution is more than the increase in number of RBCs, which means the amount of plasma is more when compared to the number of RBCs. Okay? So, there, will be, there is a physiological anemia or hemodilution present during pregnancy. So, that is one reason. Second reason is there is increased fibrinogen which means there can be more role formation in pregnancy because fibrinogen will promote role formation by inhibiting the negative charge around the RBCs. So, due to these two reasons, both of them will favor role formation and favor the sedimentation. That is why ESR is increased in pregnancy. Okay. And finally, our last question is what is the physiological basis of reticulocyte response? What do you mean by reticulocyte response? So, we know that reticulocytes are the immediate precursor cells of RBC. So, when we, uh, for anemia, when we treat them, the initial response that we see is reticulocyte response. That means there will be increased reticulocytes in the peripheral blood. So, why is there increased reticulocytes in the peripheral blood? See, that is because when we initiate the treatment, there will be increased bone marrow activity. 
which in turn will cause increased reticulocyte production and there will be increased release of reticulocytes into the peripheral blood and thus there will be higher reticulocyte count in the blood and that is called reticulocyte response. So that is why we say that we can assess the response to treatment by, by uh, checking the number of reticulocytes in the peripheral blood. Okay? So that is meant by reticulocyte response. So thus we have discussed around 10 uh, physiological basis questions especially from RBC. Do let me know if this was useful for you. Thank you.